swing traders out there, welcome back to Start Swing Trading, where we talk all about swing trading all week long. I'm actually really loving doing this show because really, at the end of the day, swing trading is my bread and butter. That's where I go ahead and focus the most of my capital. Of course, I do do a little bit of day trading on live trading, but but of course, those are all smaller positions, really trying to just focus more on my swing trading game. That's what I love to do. So let's talk all about that right here on Start Swing Trading. Smash those thumbs up. Let's get to the action. And definitely let everybody know that Start Swing Trading is getting started. There's not many swing trading shows out there. So if you can hit the share button, hit the Twitter button, go ahead and let everybody know this is where you want to be especially if you're a swing trader. Let's get to the action. Let's take a look at the SPY today. And I came in with my bullish shoes today, and it does not look bad here at all. As you guys can see, we are taking another step up, getting a nice leap up there to 403.92. And there's a reason why I was feeling a lot more bullish today. And the big thing for me is that we got bearish so quickly yesterday when we were cracking through that 394, we started squeezing those shorts. We talked about that with Anne-Marie Band yesterday. It seemed like the shorts were getting the squeeze. And especially after the market, after market hours and getting a little bit of a spike closer towards the 399 spot, we continued kind of squeezing out those shorts. And what did we do today? We went down to 399, but we didn't even break that resistance held the 400 reclaimed it and didn't even come back to that 400 we look strong on the day today and it was a great one for us especially as what we have a bunch of positions to the upside we got four swings on right now we're going to talk all about them let's get to the action you guys smash the thumbs up spy getting a nice big move i talked a lot about today why i thought this could happen and the big reason for me is i'm keeping an eye out on what i'm keeping an eye out on what's been going on technically wise especially when we talk about the golden cross that recently happened i talked about it this morning there's three stages to a golden cross right and i feel like we're finally getting out of that stage two area and we could run into the stage three the uptrend move, right? And so keeping a watch on this, a lot of times after we get a stage two golden cross, what do we do? We get a deep time frame pullback and then it catches coming back towards what? Stage three, the uptrend. Are we going into stage three to the uptrend? I think that's one thing that you need to be thinking about, right? And I'll tell you one thing, in the short term, at least for right now, until we get CPI, I'm feeling a little bullish. And if you guys know, CPI isn't going to be coming until when? Well, we got a long ways for that. It's not till the 14th. So we could still have a whole next week, but we could get that nice little push right back. There could be a way that we get to the 420 area. And I've talked about that area for so long because that's truly when we're in a new bull market, right? I think that the golden cross, a lot of the times it's going to tell us more about potential of turning than the actual turn. One thing that I do look for, though, after I see that golden cross is the deep pullback. We've had that pullback. We didn't go through the 390s. We didn't go back to the 380s. We're bouncing. And if anything, we're, we're staying above the channel. And as long as we stay above that, I think in the short term, I'm going to be feeling more to the bullish side. But let's talk about these swing trades. Let's get to the action. Let's take a look at what I've been doing on right now. Let's give an update on some of these positions. Let's go to Picard. Picard has been one that we've been holding since the 72.12 spot. And of course, that's down here towards the support. Look at that nice little push back to resistance today. And then pushing through that 75 to 76 we're almost at the profit take for Picard. We're going to be taking the profits as we reach the 6% gain. Right now, we're at about 5.37%. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But Picard, nice move there in farm and heavy construction. And why did we trade Picard? Well, let's take a look, right? I always like to do kind of the leader laggard style trade. Let's take a look at that. All right, let's take a look at, of course, CAT. Caterpillar, look at that. That was the one that got us going in the first place. 
Nice little move right back up there through the 250s. And we also talked about deer, how important deer would be for the industry. And could we hold the 420 area on deer? Let's take a look how that performed today. And boom, baby. You guys see it. Nice move there in deer. Nice little move back up. And look how it held that 420 clean. Whenever we get these types of earning stocks. And who mentioned this earlier in the week? You guys in the chat, I'll test you today. Who mentioned earning plays and looking for this kind of curve effect? He mentioned the 20 moving average, but who mentioned that? I want to see who gets it right in the chat. Let's see if you guys have been paying attention all week. Whoever gets it right, get some swag today. We'll find out if you get it. All right, DE Deer, nice little push up towards the 430s. We were watching this early on in the live trading stream. And this is what I was watching on Deer yesterday. I was even thinking about taking it yesterday, but my only problem is I didn't want to double dip. So I already knew I was decently positioned in Picard right off the support around 72. So I wasn't going to go ahead and battle, try to get it off the resistance, but it was a nice move there in Deer. So we'll see if this can continue to run. Now the next step for Deer is going to be, can we get back into the 433 and 440 range to start making a break towards the 450s? If we do that, I will be looking for some other industrial plays to keep playing, right? But this isn't the only trade that we have on. We got a couple more. Let's go to my airlines as we're starting to look for liftoff here in American Airlines. Let's talk a little bit about what levels we were looking at here. We've been looking at here for a while to do this little gap fill, right? It did do the gap fill, now starting to recover the 16. What made me look at American Airlines? I'm trying to show you guys a little bit of a trend here and how I like to attack plays. And a lot of that is what? It's more along looking for leader laggard style trades, right? You got UAL taking off, nice airline, had good earnings starting to push up. So I was looking at that. Now we're getting that nice little lift there. Can't go after UAL because I hate buying off of the highs, right? I don't, I don't like doing that. But AAL was looking for some sympathy to come in and start getting a nice little push up. Was also looking for another stock that we mentioned yesterday, JetBlue, to start making a move up. This one's already too high for me to get it. Yesterday I was looking at 812s, wanted to risk off of eight. This is already kind of making that move back to 850. I can see JetBlue maybe making it ways to nine, but American Airlines is definitely one that I like. We are getting up there towards the trend line. As we get into the 1660s here, I will be taking a little bit off as we're about 4.2%. That'll be closer to uh, that 5% spot there as we get through there. I want to take some profits and then look for the expansion move. You guys know I like to take profits along the way and try to pay myself, right? All right, we'll see what happens on this American Airlines. My average is 1586. We'll see what happens on that American Airlines. Can it get to the 17 handle? That's really, I'm looking to sell some into the 1660s and then looking to see if we can push through the 17, making our way to like 1740s and 1750s. That could be top profits. A lot of these trades, I'm not really looking to hold them on for too long. I'm just looking to try to get that bang out of the range, get it to like spike up, Take the profits and run. Picard is one of those that I am looking at. Maybe even today we take the money and run. Because if we get to the 6%, I've been telling myself more and more, I got to take the money and run. 6% seems to be a nice sweet spot as of late. We'll talk a little bit about that coming up. All right, let's get out of that one. There's one last swing trade that we have on, and this one we've been in for a while now. Essentially since Wednesday when we cut above this 17 we got into AU looking for gold to make a move back up. Was really looking for this to kind of fill the gap. It has made a nice move. It's just stair-stepping up. So I'm not going to cut this by any means. We're up about 3.47% in this one. Going to look to see if we can get to the next level to the 18s and keep pushing on this one. This one's a little bit smaller trade, but I'm going to give it the room to run. Uh, AU, I've traded it before, so I kind of like the way it kind of just stair-steps up. Was also looking at GOLD to kind of hold 16 pullbacks, but it never got to that 16. So I was never able to get in down there by 16. It's actually been pushing here to the 1650s. And this is just kind of also a reversal pattern after it was really strong, pulling back, just trying to get it back there. I think gold can get maybe like this a GOLD to like 17. We'll see what happens on that AU trade. 
All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to bring it back. What's going on out there? It's good to see you guys. Walter, EKS, Ben Berger, Chaykin said Delta. Delta what? <laughs> uh, DAL maybe? Yeah, I'll take a look at DAL. It probably doesn't look too bad. Do you think it was a good idea to keep Oxy CRM over the weekend? Hmm, to leave. I can't tell you if it was a good idea, but I can tell you if I like the charts, right? That I can at least tell you on those names. I'm going to talk about oil names coming up to leave. So stick around. I got some for you there. And there's actually one play there to leave that I'm still kicking myself about. We'll talk a little bit about that coming up. Let's get to the new trade on the day. Like always, I want to go ahead and let you guys know what new trades I'm getting into. So smash the like button. Let's get to the action. I got a new one on today. And this was all about one of the top winners that we had. But I'm taking a shot in CF, CF Industry Holdings. Just got a starter on today. I have 8731s. So if you look at it, essentially, I'm down on the position, right? I'm going to be straight up transparent about that, right? How many traders do you know tell you about a position that they're down that they haven't told you about? Tell you that, you know, there's not many out there going to talk to you about it, right? Well, CF is one that I'm looking at. Why? Because I see the industry moving fast, right? I see MOS just ripping, 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 ripping. And CF has run with MOS before. And as I see this start taking the lead, right, I start looking for the laggard style trade. One of our top trades of the week was actually a part of this area. What is this area we're talking about? It's the industry agricultural inputs. And of course, we're talking more about the move in pot ash, of course. So keep your eyes on these. We'll look to see if they can continue to run. And let's get to that. Let's go to now I want to go ahead and cover. What are we going to get into? We're going to go get into the top trades of the week. All right. Like always, I want to go ahead and review a little bit with you guys. What was my top trades of the week? Top trades of the week were, of course, one of them is going to be NTR. And that was actually given by the chat in the live trading stream. I, was, I took a look at this. And what did I see? I took a look and I looked at what do I look for? I look for a lot of the times what we call the rule of three reversal, right? And so if you take a look here, one of the things that we can clearly see is bottoming action on this chart, right? A lot of the times I'm looking for about four bottoming actions to show us that reversal style back to the upside. And it shouldn't really break through the support of that third attempt to break down, right? So the third attempt to break down, you do get a little cut there towards kind of 71s. I put the, the support around more like 7250s. But you can see here how when we came back for that fourth attempt to break through 7250s, you didn't get there. A lot of times what I'm going to do is not necessarily react there. I want to react to see if we start seeing reversal style action. So as we started coming back through here, that's when I started getting more interested in NTR. I took it around here, got the pop yesterday, and just sold it into the pop. If it's going to get to a trend line in this market and give me it in like two days, well, I'm going to take that money and run and run the other way, right? It's a tough trade, a lot out there. We're not getting the big expansion moves, 20, 30% gainers, right? If I can make 6% on a name like this, I mean, just look at that. One day, it did about 6.3% move. We'll take it and run, team. There's nothing wrong with taking some profits. And there was another top trade on the week. Of course, you guys know how I like my X. X go give it to you. Wait for you to get it on your own. X go deliver to you. Knock, knock, open up the let's door. go. Let's go. Smash the like, team. This one was a good one. And a little part of me is like, man. Maybe should have held on to this one, but I took the profits into the move, right? We took this one at 28.87, looking for the push back towards 30. We took some profits there at 30. And then the next day, as it came back down through that 31, we took the rest of the profits, but now it's right back down there, right back up there towards 31.50s. We'll look to see if this takes off. And this has been an area that we've been calling out, not just in uh, X, right? If you guys remember, Christian Fromhertz was on and he talked about a couple of names in the steel, also included X, but Cleveland Cliff. 
Look at that takeoff team. Not a bad one there, right? He was on on Tuesday, and you can see we were right here in this candle. Nice little push there in Cleveland Cliff. New core, nice little push there since Tuesday. That was right here. Not a bad little move, right? You guys see this getting the nice little lift. And he brought in a couple of other ones, right? BLBR. That continued that nice little move. That doesn't look bad. And let's take a look at some of the other ones that he mentioned. PI, he mentioned. ACLS. Hmm. You seeing how these are kind of keeping the trend? Uh, let's take a look at CRUS. This is one that he mentioned. Semiconductor. Still hanging on there. Just keep an eye out on them. We'll definitely try to review some of the mentions from, of course, Christian Fromhertz. But now I want to take you guys over out of that. Um, let's get back to some action. Let's go into my missed play of the week. This is when I look at the opportunities that kind of, you know, stress me out a little bit sometimes. I'm going to be honest, team. The number one way that I can get frustrated in trading and you guys can let me know, what's your number one way that you get frustrated in trading? Well, the number one way that I get frustrated in trading is when I look at a chart, like let's say like after hours, right? I'm looking at it. I'm writing down the levels. I'm making my plan out. I'm liking the trade and I'm liking the, the industry. I'm looking a little bit about what's going on in the macro environment in that industry. And then all of a sudden the market opens, right? And I get distracted. And I start looking at other trades and I miss one that I had all planned out. Plan the trade, trade the plan, right? We talk about this often here. Let's go ahead and take a look at my misplay of the week. Misplay of the week is going to be MPC, Marathon Petroleum Corp. And this was a really nice looking chart for me. MPC is kind of more of your player here in, of course, oil, gas, refinery. But what could I see? I could see the trend line holding on this one. So the trend has continued. It's not like the other oil names where like, let's say XOM, you get these up and down moves, right? MRO, you get these up and down moves. Well, look at MPC. That's a continued trend to the upside. So this one doesn't look bad at all. And I was looking at it specifically for the break of this trend line. And we got it on Monday. We just broke above. A lot of the times, what do I look for when I get this break? I'm looking for what they call the throwback look, right? Where you break above, and then what do you do? You retrace right to that trend line, maybe sometimes slightly below that, and then get the breakout, right? Well, I had the opportunity here towards 125 and down even towards 123.50s to get in the name after the break of the trend line and look for the expansion move back to the upside, Around the 130s, I would have been taking some profits and then looking for the move back up here towards 135 to take the rest. This doesn't look too bad there. And not going to complain because like always, you're going to miss some and you never know, right? I mean, I'm trading live. I'm dealing with kind of a lot of different things that are going on. But this was definitely one of my top watch for the week. And it'll go down as a miss. It's okay, team. It's going to happen. But we'll keep moving forward. Hope that you, someone out there, someone in the world was able to nail that great looking trade there on MPC. And for that being mentioned, yesterday we mentioned EQT. I still like this one. Keep this one on radar team. I do like the turnaround. This is kind of more of that natural gas type of trade. We'll look to see if this one can keep moving. I like the chart that it's starting to push. Now we'll look for maybe like 34s to hold on pullbacks. As it's starting to push back, does it do a little bit of a throwback look towards maybe like 3380s, then bounces right back through that 34 level. We'll see what happens there on EQT. But some oil names, and I know that someone wanted to take a look at Oxy. Earlier in the week, I even traded Oxy, um, was trying to get a nice little push up there back here towards the 61, was even talking about how you had that nice volume expansion here on the lows. And today we got the fake out on the oil names we got that oil mentioned this morning chevron was even breaking through the 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 pattern there this morning you can see it cut down here towards 160 and what does it do <laughs> nice recovery there be careful with oil names man i've seen this happen often where the pattern itself gets cracked but you don't nowhere near that you were down there to 160.02 look where you're closing 165 on Chevron. Let's take a look at these names as they start to push back. I'm going to look at like the XLE and that shows me more and more 
we could be coming back to make another one of these highs attempts, right? We have one, two, three. You guys know how to talk about my rule of three all the time. I'm going to look for this to be kind of the attempt to break out. We'll see if we actually start getting some drive in some of these oil names. All right, but keeping a close eye on Picard, I will let you guys know if I take the profits and run. But in a few seconds, we're going to get into our interview. So I just wanted to give that perspective. We'll see what happens. Let's go really quickly into where some of the names that I saw today that were strong. Some of that were going to be, of course, in technology, the second leading sector from the open. You guys can see what is the leading industry in technology. It's actually solar right now. Um, and that's just based from the open, about 3.56% for the industry. And you can see solar really starting to push back. And there's some names here that I definitely want to keep an eye out. I was even looking for first solar to come down. That never wanted to break. I could tell right around here, just didn't want to let go. I'm glad I didn't short into this thing because this thing's become now a little rocket back to the upside. Now, I was looking at SEDG for possibility back through 330s today. And we had this sideways action off the 324s, even pulled back towards around the 320s at one point, 320, 31s. And it's back up there. It hit 330s. This is definitely one that I'd keep on the radar. I really like kind of the monthly and the weekly on SEDG. I don't have a swing trade on this one. I have swung this one in the past and gotten a nice win on this one. So I'm going to keep it on watch. And for that being mentioned, if those two will be going, I'll be looking for EN, EMPH to play a little catch up as it's been just completely destroyed since about December. It's been pulled back about like 40% almost on EMPH. So I could see this bouncing back also. This is going to be more of that laggard behind the action. SEDG did have good earnings also, so I would give it a little bit more support. And I know that some people are watching smaller names like SunPower, and I've traded like Max N before in the solar game, but I'm going to stick to more of the bigger names for this one for solar and SEDG. Last kind of area that I wanted to take a look at was growth names strong today. Of course, you guys can take a look at that with ARKK, right? We can take a look at some of these names that were able to have a decent day. Shop definitely bounced off the 40s as of late, and we can keep an eye out to see if Shop can actually start making its way back. Wanted to take an eye to see if Zoom was going to get start moving. We can take a look at like Roku stayed strong in ARK. And of course, Tesla, Tesla, Tesla coming back today. A lot of shorts probably coming in yesterday and then getting a little bit of a squeeze already today. We'll see if this can get back above 200. If it can, maybe it can push back there to 220s. Right now, I'm just kind of staying out of Tesla. Why? Because I feel like now we're not trending, right? We're going just sideways. And if we're going to go sideways on Tesla, I don't want to be trading it. I'll wait till it either breaks above or below the range. And I could see Tesla pulling back to 150 if it ever really kind of cracks. But I don't think that's happening anytime soon. So you guys know how it is with Tesla. It's a very difficult trade there. And I don't want to run in front of a beast. And just to kind of mention, the worst trade of the week would probably have to have been Burlington. Definitely got my uh, coat hanger put on me on that one. But hey, you guys know I'm fully transparent. And I'll always tell you, win or lose, whatever happens, right? All right, let's get to it. Now, one of the things that you guys know I've been working on, of course, is my CMT. So I said, what? Let's bring on a CMT. I got Michael Noss in the back. You ready, guys? Smash the like button. How we doing, Michael? Hey, Mitch. What's going on, my man? It's good to have you on. You know, one thing I always like to do is try to surround myself with uh, kind of the community that I feel really trying to work on their career, up their career. That's how I found you, Michael. So well, definitely wanted to give you a shout out on that. I can see you're pushing okay. forward and, and really trying to get to the next level. That's what it's all about, right? I mean, you got these guys that are, have like 20, 40 years advantage on us, but we're catching up, Michael. We're catching up. The new blood, the new blood. Yes. Yes, new blood on the street, they say. All right, let's get to the action. Of course, you cover all different types of markets. You definitely work also with a lot of scanners and different groups. I've even seen you on Trader TV. I mean, you're all over the place, Michael. Tell us a little bit about what you like to do, how you like to trade, and then we can get into a little bit more of your setups. Yeah, sure thing. So I'm, as you mentioned, I'm a CMT, and that's how we end up chatting. Mm -hmm. Um and but I'm more on kind of the quantitative side as well. So I like to build uh, algorithms. I like to study, 
you know, pass moves. I like to, you know, try to have a little bit of statistics on my side before I just place a trade. And then on top of that level of statistics, I don't think you can ever just follow an algorithm 100% and just have it have it work for you. But that's when the kind of art to the art of the science comes in, right? So I'll build an algorithm. I'll say, hey, there's some advantage to me looking at this sector, or this stock, or, or this, this price action, or whatever it is. And then you dive in, and I look just like most traders, you know, candlestick charts, basic indicators, all that kind of stuff. So where most people will kind of look at a fundamental side of thing and say, hey, I want to look at, I don't know, uranium because of, you know, X, Y, Z macro event. I go, mm -hmm. okay, what am I, what are my scans? What are my algos telling me to do? Now let me dive in there and let's see what looks good to, uh, to my eye after looking at charts for so long. Love it. I love how you bring in different variables there and also just saying like, well, I don't want to be making too many opinions. Let's use a little bit more quantitative approach to try to not be so opinionated and discretionary. I like the outlook, Michael. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at maybe some setups. I know that you keep up with a lot of relative strength. Let us know. What do you see out there right now, Mike? Yeah, so, you know, relative strength to me is kind of the bread and butter. I, I you know, there's a aversion to buying things that are hitting new highs. We all got indoctrinated with the buy low sell high of of yesteryear um and for me it's it's more about buy high sell higher so i want to focus on where is the market focused what when the market sells off are they the institutions or or whatever what are they not selling off and that's what i want to get into and that's what i want to focus on because the idea being is that when the market is selling off, if there's a handful or if there's a basket of stocks or an industry or even some individual names that are doing well, then when the market starts to rebound, we can we can grab those strong names. And, you know, based off a whole bunch of academic studies that I could quote, buying relative strength outperforms the market kind of year in, year out, uh, you know, beats the pants off trying to buy buy dips and beating up stocks and and this kind of stuff. So that's where I focus. I want to look at what's strong here. Awesome. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at it. And if you like, you can go ahead and share your screen if you want. Yeah. There's a present yeah. button at the bottom. Go gotcha. ahead and share. If not, I always bring up my charts, but cool. I, I'd love to check out yours. I've seen your stream and I do want to let you guys know after this team, stick around because what I'm going to do is we're doing start swing trading here. Michael's going to go ahead and talk about some of the trades that he sees, some setups out there. And then after this show, guess what? I got a surprise for you guys. We're actually going to redirect you guys over. Michael likes to look into some charts at the end of the week. And can you blame him? He's actually going to be doing a little show after this. So stick around, team. Got a lot more for you right here. All right, let's oh, get to the action. Here, your charts up. Let's go. Yeah, let's see what you so got. So yeah, I was looking at at Burl just because you oh, you mentioned oh, it. Oh, the Burlington. Um, <laughs> I was just scrolling through stuff as you were chatting there. Um, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I again appreciate sending everyone over. I go live on Friday after the close, and one of the reasons for it is uh, with trade ideas and in which I consult. I built this relative strength algorithm that we just talked about, and basically mm. what this is doing is every you know 10 or 15 seconds it's going through the entire stock market and it's ranking every stock in the stock market based off of uh, some indicators that we put in and, and a ranking system so just the overview of how it works is if the stock's over its 200 day moving average maybe you give it a couple points if it's in the high of its year range maybe give it a couple points. When you get to this in your CMT, uh, you'll focus on um, Ned Davis's Fab Five. It's kind of the inspiration behind this, where instead of just looking at a binary event, is it doing this? Is it doing this? Just saying, let's rank by a weight of the evidence all the time. So uh, that's that list here at the bottom. And we can just go through and, and just start going through the list. I know I sent you some of the names. Some of the names are yeah. a little bit different from, uh, from when I sent them over, because again, it's updating all the time. But Number one on this list, which doesn't look like it's for the faint of heart at all, is Seabay, which is in uh, a pharmaceutical um, manufacturing, pharmaceutical prep. Um, and you can see just insane relative strength, right? We moved from four bucks up to up to eight bucks. So we've doubled over the last you know year or so. And now we're putting in this uh, this nice consolidation right here. So the idea behind this is that 
anybody who's short a name like this is in trouble. Anyone who's buying a name like this is happy. Um, eventually, these relative strength things changes. You know, eventually the Zooms of the world are no longer popular or the Pelotons of the world are no longer or the meme stocks or whatever it is. So these things cycle. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the meat in the middle of the trend. If, if this is going to be, according to the algorithm, the strongest name in the market, this is something I'm going to take a look at. Right. I, I want to know more about this and I can go and and learn a little bit more about the company if I want to zoom in and check out. Uh, I see a whole bunch of stuff that I probably don't understand with different drug names and things like that. But uh, <laughs> that's where Benzinga shines, right? You could load yeah. up, you could read through and and geek out with that kind of stuff if that's what you're yeah, interested. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't see it's a bad one. And I think it's it's kind of funny that I, I that you bring up this name. Looks like I have lines because I've I've used TC for so long. I have line from 2017 on that one and it's and it was back when it was trying to trade through kind of 921s so who, who knows maybe there's some support here and some prior action that we can look for uh looks like it broke that eventually going towards the event like 15 back in 2017 so uh it's interesting you know and that's back in that in that period right it's it's coming back to these levels that it's struggled before it's always great to know a little bit of the past history of the stock yeah, and, and you know, from here, so we're over the the twenty twenty highs, which is great. But from mm -hmm. here, if it could get to that, you know, these prior highs at fifteen, that's that's near a double. Like, what, what else? What else are you after? Yeah. And again, the beauty of this is that all of the time it goes through, and it can start to give you themes as well. Now, I went through a little bit, and today's the day that I really couldn't find one. But sometimes when you're looking at a relative strength scanner, all of a sudden you notice maybe. Uh, China, right? All the names are from China or, or around there. And you're like, okay, that sector is probably really hot. I should take a look at that. Uh, you know, maybe it's tech or maybe it's oil or, or something like that. But sometimes when there is um, no kind of foreseeable type of uh, trend in what's in the, in the thing, that can give you kind of like an everything rally. Maybe everything is mm -hmm. becoming strong at the time as well, right? And we all know AI. Uh, this one's a little bit overextended for me right now. Um, but you know, number two in the relative strength list, it, obviously, you yeah. know, we, we all know what's happening with these things. They're going, they're going insane, but, uh, a nice break out of this triangle right here. I don't know if right now is the moment to chase, but this, I think this has to be on everybody's watch list for some sort of base or consolidation. It rejected there at 30 bucks uh, last month. So, you know, maybe if we can get and hold through 30 bucks, that will rocket it. Check out this short float on AI. We got 26%. Um, those shorts today especially have to be feeling that pain. I wonder how many of, of what this rally is, which we can see is still going right now, is yeah. just that 25% short float feeling the pain. I think about it this way because I was actually looking at it on the day where it went through 28 to 31. And I was even calling the 28 short there. So even if I got it at like where I think was the absolute best short there, maybe 28 off the high of the day there. And I was risking off the 31 as it came back through 28 today. Oh, hell no. I wouldn't have been holding that. <laughs> no. So I could just think about that. And I, I would just say, yeah, they, they probably got the squeeze on them today. Even if you were thinking that you were ahead for any reason you held and they went down to that daily low and you were thinking, oh, it's going to break 20. It's going to be back at 15 tomorrow. Well, clearly earnings came in at least not too bad. And I saw some analyst rating. Uh, I think it was Needham that said that they walk in the walk now. So, uh, hey, who knows? When you started getting analyst support on top of the retail, like cult-like following, oh yeah, they can get moving. Well, and, and what happens in a lot of these hot sectors, you got to think of it, and I spent about 10 years in the, in the hedge fund and institutional space. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people making phone calls to their investment manager, to their mm -hmm. hedge fund. They're saying, okay, what are you doing with AI? Right? And if the hedge fund manager sends out those quarterly reports and they don't have any AI exposure at all, and meanwhile, all of their investors have been out at the golf course, they've been at the pub, they've been drinking with buds, talking about how this AI stuff's going to change the world. If they get a report and you're not invested, then you know they're going to move their money, they're going to yell at you, they're going to you know slash your tires or whatever. So they, there's a certain amount of like almost peer pressure in the stock market where yeah. it's like 
when an industry comes along and it just blows out of the water, like you got to think of, what was it? 2017 or so with like the marijuana stocks, you know, everybody would be doing the same thing. They'd be calling their portfolio manager saying, why aren't you in these pot stocks? These things are going to, these things are going to change the world and legalization and make all this money. And now, you know, it could AI be another boom bust thing like the marijuana stocks? Yeah. Maybe. But um, I always say I love bubbles. If this is a bubble, yeah. I love it. You know, yeah, it's a hype bubble. I call yeah. it the hype bubble. And there's always the next hype. Right. And I think that that's one thing that we all need to kind of stick to. One thing that I always say is that you you might want to like always keep up with trends and have friends that are those types of people that keep up with trends. I have one that I mention all the time. He's a writer for us, Chris Ketchy. So if he mentions something, I go and I look into it a little bit. That's how I found out early about NFTs. That's how I found out early about SPACs. So it's good to like kind of be early and then kind of start watching things develop versus waiting for you know everybody to be talking about it left and right right i talk about those early adopters pay attention try to understand it do some research before it gets to that big hype moment and you might be able to take advantage of the opportunity um i i see one on your scanner there that i thought was really interesting because it, it actually uh got me an idea when i was doing kind of live trading which was pinterest I see yep. that uh, a little bit down there. And this is one that just started spiking today. And it was a, kind of random, really. I, di- I didn't look in the news to see if maybe there was some news on Pinterest. But as soon as that one started going, I like to do a lot of like kind of leader laggard style trades, right? Where something goes in the industry like a leader or something relationship wise, I can maybe trade off of it. So with Pinterest's first move, it was kind of like a little breakthrough, kind of like the 2568, 2570s going towards 26. When I saw that, I called in the chat there because we were starting to wrap up. I was like, well, maybe what if Snap moves off of this? Because Snap loves to move with Pinterest a lot of the times. So if Pinterest is getting the lift, will Snap get the lift? Not a bad little lift there. After that one was right off of the VWAP there, it even came back down closer towards that 1025 giving us that nice little opportunity and then really took off there. So I, I don't know about you, Michael, but I really love p- catching plays that maybe I missed the rip, right? On Pinterest, I didn't catch it, but I could still catch something else in the industry. Yeah, that and that's, that's a again, as an old man trader, I've been doing, doing this uh, one way or another since 2006. It's a mega common way to trade is, is – this relationship. I know, you know, fellow Canadian of mine, triple D talks about this all the time <laughs> on your show, right? It's uh, yeah. Um, you know, it, it, things move together. These, and these algorithms will push things up or down together. And we have a, a crazy move going on today in meta. And you can see that's kind of on the, on the bottom here of that, this relative strength yeah. scanner. So crazy move going on in meta. And then we've got all this talk about TikTok being banned and stuff. So I think that's bringing, bring a lift to this and, and, one of the things that I like to look for for entries after reading, I got it behind me here, but my, uh, my buddy Brian Shannon just released a book about Anchored View app. Mm-hmm. And uh, a good entry for stuff like this, for these pullbacks that you know your audience might want to look at, and I know you got this in TC2000 and we got it over here at Trade Ideas, is mm-hmm. you can anchor a view app from the last swing high. And what this shows you is kind of where the average market participant is from that last swing high. So as this line kind of goes on, it's basically what would happen if you started dollar costing averaging from this area. And quite often, if you get a break and a close through these in stronger trends, it's just a great way to say, okay, that's my entry. Um, I can quantify my entry now instead of kind of guessing around on, on when I think I should get in. And it's been something that I've been adding ever since I read that book to my own trading as just a way to quantify entries. And I love it. And you can see Pinterest is just closing above that right now. So it means the average participant from about you know a day or two before earnings is now in the money. And they've been out of the money this whole time. So you could think of that as kind of maybe a sentiment flip, right? Now everyone's feeling good. They're feeling happy. They're, they're more inclined to maybe buy more or at least not sell what they have. So, you know, being number four on the relative strength scanner and then breaking that anchored VWAP, this is a really, really good looking one. Um, and, and the thing I love about, you know, trades like this, you know where you're wrong, right? If we yeah. break under that low and we close below, it's just time to go and, and do something else. So you, you've got your entry to find, you got your risk to find. And, and after that, it's just a numbers game. 
right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. After that, it's just if the market works or not. Like I like to say, we don't work the stock. The stock market works itself. We just take a couple of bets every now and then, right? Yeah. Um, let's get to um, one that I saw on your list. It's not here right now, but I, I saw Baidu and I've been thinking about the China names, right? Those are interesting names by by all means. And especially I've been trying to stay away and been telling myself to stay away from the China trade, but I've missed out on a lot by doing that. What do you think about these names, Michael? Well, I always look at KWeb uh, as, mm -hmm. as kind of the easiest alternative for China. And it is outperforming the market a little bit here. Uh, we had a little bit of a, a rally yesterday. Uh, when you're going to play with these, there is some, you know, there's that risk, right? And it's when the market's closed and, and God knows what they're going to take care of. But um so there, there's that risk to them, but they have been strong relative to the market for a long time. Um, Baidu, I know Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett have been talking about this name and, and loading up for a while. So it's good to have those uh, that company. But the main thing I'm looking at this is how strong this kind of 5550 one or sorry 15550 level is going back all the way until March 2022. It's just been battling this level. Every time it hits it, it bounces off. So if we can get a break and a clear move through this, uh, you know that there's there's algorithms and traders that have been having a good time just shorting every time it hits this level um, or at least selling their longs if they're buying bounces. So if that flips and we can get through that level, that's uh, that's fantastic. And then maybe... You know, we're, we're finally done this massive correction that's taken us from, you know, 300 down to 100. So maybe it's time to kind of drift back up and maybe test 200 or so. So whenever I see a level that's this insanely strong, that's kind of a level I want to play against because the more people that are, are watching a level, uh, the more significant I think it is when it breaks. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I think that, you know, when I was looking at it just a couple of weeks ago, I was like, well, China, I feel like let us out of this. And we really kind of saw the bottoming on China right around the same time that we saw our bottoming and it started kind of coming down. I, I was looking at like Baba um, and that started like coming down and I was like, well, I don't know, may maybe they can reverse back. I mean, if, especially if China can stay strong, I feel like why can't we stay strong? Right. Um, uh, a lot of times, even earlier this week, we saw China names like kind of a sudden jump the market was up at the top of the range and we were all coming in like, why are we up today? Like what's going on? Well, it's just simple as that, right? China was getting a little bit of a jump and then it pulled back all the way to the bottom of the range. So we'll keep an eye out on these names. I think it's very important to at least watch them. Maybe yep. you don't trade them because of political risk. That's why I'm staying out of them, but who knows? I mean, at the end of the day, they have been really strong since around that November time. So We'll keep watch on these China names. Any last one you want to mention, Michael, before I let you out of here? Uh, last one that I really, that I'd really like to mention. This is one that's near and dear to my heart. This mm. is actually a trade I took today. Um, ASO. And, and this is, if I had to pick kind of a, a, a bread and butter strategy, yeah. it's finding stuff that's in nice, sustained, long uptrends with heavy short floats. We got a 30% short float on ASO. And, you know, I always say the the big short floats like Silvergate or uh, Bed Bath & Beyond on stocks that are just getting killed, those shorts aren't nervous, right? They, the, the guy who's short Silvergate at 100 bucks and it's, you know, at what, five today, he's not nervous, right? But 30% exactly. of the short float on a stock like ASO that's breaking out to new highs, that's basing at new highs, right? You just know mathematically that if we break out of this little wedge on ASO, that 30% short float starts to get real, real nervous. And that's what I look for because that's the moment that you can get these kind of squeezes where, you know, these people have been leaning against this name just a little bit too long from this year alone or, you know, a year um, year of trading, it's doubled. It's gone from 30 to 60 and it's a sporting goods store, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, it's not like they cured anything so it's you know you need to kind of you need to watch these things because this is where the pain point is if we can get a nice break on aso i bought a little bit today i'll pick up some more if we can break through highs and and see if those shorts get on the run a little bit
Not bad stock to mention, at least just from the story wise. I talk a lot about story. I, I like Academy. I like what they do. They go for a little bit of a lower price than Dick's Sporting Goods. And I think that just the smallest little spike, slight tweak there is giving them an advantage, especially in the time right now, right? Where we're all worried about like dollars and dollars going out, right? Well, yeah. Any slight cut in that money is probably going to lead you into Academy versus a Dick Sporting Goods. And I can tell you because I have two that are literally down the street from each other. They're like less than a mile. So a lot of the times I look at both of them and if Academy has it cheaper, I'm going to Academy. And I feel like Academy really took uh, the Sports Authority market share, right? Remember Sports Authority? I it do, used to yeah. Be, it used to be a little bit of a leader there. And I feel like they were able to jump in there and really kind of take that lead um, and they've been really catching up to like a dick sporting good uh, that just I feel like sometimes they're too big. They don't have a tendency of having cheaper prices, always truly expensive. When you look at all, a lot of the times for me at, on dicks, I compare them to online shopping, right? If I wanted to buy from Amazon or if I just wanted to just search the product, most of the times I'm not going to dicks. That's just the honest truth. Unless they're giving me a discount, right? Maybe like a, a coupon or something. But ASO, I love stocks like that too that can continue the trend. And these are the type of stocks that we want to be looking at also, not just in kind of the swing trading outlook, but long-term investment. It doesn't look that bad when you're seeing stocks that just have a tendency of continuing to climb. I compare that to like the a AZO, AutoZone Life. Oh my okay. God, that, that's, that's one that's like, please. This is why you buy some shares maybe sometimes for some kids, give them a little birthday present because who knows, right? I mean, I, I, I look at AZO and I and look 10 years down the line. I mean, the stock moved 400, 500,000 percent in the last 12 years. These are the type of stocks that we want to definitely keep an eye out. Well, like always, you guys can keep up with everything that Michael does. I will go ahead and throw up his Twitter here. And definitely, you guys, don't go anywhere after the show. It's going to redirect you right to his show. And he's going to be going through some charts. So if you guys got some charts you guys want to check out, definitely come on over. I'll throw up his Twitter there. And we'll see you in a little bit, Michael, as the show Thank redirects to yours. Thank you very much, man. I love being here. Love what you guys are doing. Love, uh, love talking stocks. So definitely always work, we'll definitely have you back on michael appreciate you coming on today man all right that's gonna do it for our guest today but like i said don't go anywhere team this will redirect you right to his channel you don't got to go anywhere and then you guys can hit the subscribe definitely give him a good subscribe when you get over there all right let's go back to the market let's take a look at what are we getting towards the close here and it looks like we're starting to top out but we went to whoa 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 this kept climbing team we got up there towards 404.45. Wow. Did not expect to see that. One thing that I definitely would say is that we're definitely starting to push back out of this kind of even that channel, which is the 401. So now I'll be looking for around like kind of that 400 to hold as support. I even mentioned it earlier today as we started recovering that 400. Can we just hold it on pullbacks? I'll stay short term in the bullish game there. Picard, 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 5.73 team. I could run to the cash right now and just try to get it, but this chart looks good. I'm going to hold this and swing it till Monday. We'll see if we can get a little bit more of a push, get to that 6% and take the winnings and running. Uh, CF, definitely a little bit of a downturn here. Did get a little bit of an ad there now towards 86.90s. We'll hold off of that 86 spot here. I think we can maybe even get a cut down tomorrow or a Monday when we cut back down and a recovery of 86. We'll see what happens on CF. Uh, of course, MOS also kind of slowing down a little bit. We could get a pullback on these names. We just got to keep watch on what happens there to CF. Main thing for me on CF is just it's staying in this rectangle, not really breaking through this low here, 83.24, and looking to take that next step up through 88 and 89. We'll see what happens there on CF. And let's go ahead. Let's take a look at American Airlines. That one's still pushing. Didn't get to it. My profit take today. It got really close to 8, 1655. I'll look for a move to like 1670s. Um, and then we'll go ahead and take some profits. Look for that to continue working. American Airlines. And how's the Tesla Dragon? Starting to turn around from the 200. We'll keep watch to see what happens on that name. Of course, next week will be definitely fun. I'm going to look to get some new swing traders on here. So if you guys have any swing trader you guys want to see on the show, 
let me know, team. Hit me up. Mitch at Benzinga.com. Uh, if you guys want to send me an email or you guys can just hit up the comments after the show or reach out to me on Twitter, Money Mitch BZ. If you guys have a swing trader you guys want to see on here, I'll definitely reach out to them to get them on. All right, it's 350 team. Let's go ahead. Anybody got any tickers? We'll do a little bit of ticker time. If not, we'll be wrapping up just shortly here. And then, of course, you don't got to go anywhere. There's still a lot more going on. Right here, we'll get you guys over to Michael's channel as we wrap up the day. 350 team, let's see what we got out there. All right, now there was some other stocks that I can take a look at. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at maybe some software names. Those were doing great on the week. And Option Mike talked about Meta. Meta, Meta, Meta. Looks like mm, Meta coming back, team. He was looking for a move back above. That's starting to push back towards 184. I'm going to have to reach out to Option Mike to see what he thinks about that recent move. But a nice little push there in Meta today. All right, let's get to some of those in the chat. I'm starting to see some stocks fly. We'll get into it. All right, HYG. This is the bonds life, the bonds life. All right, well, one thing that we can do, right, is just go off of the bottoming action, right? And so... Let's make it simple, right? Let's not try to complicate things. This is kind of the trend line to the downside, right? We can call some support here. And then you did this kind of like cut through and recovery, right? Well, we definitely don't want to see it break that 72.82. We're kind of in that bullish tune. We really need to get it back here towards 76.62. If you look at the monthlies, what do you see? Well, you see a lot of that sideways trend here. Will we break through the downside going back through 72? Or back above through 76. It's just kind of in the middle of the waters is what I would say here. It doesn't necessarily lean towards one side. I think you would have to call it on how you feel the market's going to go as of late. But take a look at the TLT. TLT bouncing a little bit back there towards the 101 today. But was really cracking since the market. But held on to that 100. So if anything, I'm looking for that 100 to hold on. If you do crack right below that 100, watch out. You could be breaking down also in HYG. We'll see what happens on there for that one. It would be like a cut through 73 through that 72. Yeah, you could come a little lower back towards that 71. We'll see what happens on this one. And I know a lot of people look at also like JNK. And so if you like that one, maybe you're keeping an eye on this one, Wally, uh, which is the Spiders Barclay High Yield Bond ETF. And you can see on this one, it's closer towards that 90 line, right? Can it hold 90? Come back here towards 95. We'll see what happens on the bonds trade. All right, 961 million to the sell side. That's more like it. We'll see. AMAT being mentioned by Larry Hill here. Let's take a look. AMAT starting a nice little push. I like this kind of curve effect here. This doesn't look too bad for it to continue. One thing I'd note, though, of course, we saw how Mar uh, Marvell's earnings was, but it did come back on the day, right? Pretty much back there towards the 44. Let's take a look here. Hmm. I, I didn't, I don't remember seeing um, AMAT's earnings. So let me just take a quick look at applied materials. How are the earnings? Just because there was so much going through, right? I'm looking at it right now. Uh, didn't do too bad. It reported in February 16th. That's why I don't remember. It's been a little too much since then. Uh, but we got a surprise beat on EPS about 5.18. And then the revenues also beat. And in the last three quarters, we have beat. So it doesn't look too bad here for it to continue. Hey, Matt, let's see if it starts to push here on the weeklies. Hmm, Looks like we're kind of coming back here through this level here. Now you really held that 110. Let's see if we can come back through this 120. 120 is going to be very key next week to really start driving through and start making it back towards the 124, 92s or 125. We'll see what happens on there. I like the pullback and hold. The pullback and hold looks good on that applied materials. Just needs to drive through kind of that uh, 120 here uh, in the next couple of days. If it can do that, I don't mind this one at all. All right, when treasuries pick up again, HYG will be the play. Yeah, definitely. You got to wait. You got to wait. You got to be patient on that bond trade. KEX 7561. Let's go to the daily chart. 
This one is pushing a little bit higher. Take a look at the monthly chart on this one. Nice little move back above the monthly. You can see it here. This around like kind of the 72, 23 areas. You kind of bunched up there in February. Now you're pushing above that. So I would pull that a little slightly down and make sure that we're holding around the 71s for this one. Wouldn't want to see it break 71s. Would want to just see it kind of push through here, get back towards the 80s. What's the next step on the highs? I could see around 76, 41s. We could run into some ish, uh, some resistance right we're around 75 64 let's look to see if this can push back here towards that 78 and keep going this is kex this is a shipping import and just to mention that one shipping import i always look at a kind of like an s bulk uh to see if this starts getting moving this is star bulk keeping an eye out on these shippers so what i'll do is i'll, I'll set an alert there for us on that one that's a s bulk but i also will look at that x that kex to see if we can get that push back into the 77s and the 80 handle for KEX. All right. Well, another sell um, imbalance there towards the close that seems to be absorbed. <laughs> Walter says, I'm dying to short right now. But hey, we'll see. We'll see. It seems like we're just bouncing back. But it was a great bounce back on the day. Didn't expect to see a nice little push like that. It was a nice little uh, move back to the upside there. It's about 314 Almost a full percent to the upside. We'll see what happens in this buy. All right, team, that's going to do it for me. It's 356. I'm going to go ahead and call it a wrap for the week. Like always, you guys can stick around and look at uh, Michael that's going to be coming up next as he goes through some charts. And I always like just looking through some charts. So if you guys ever want to join or reach out to me on Sunday, we can do it together also as a team. So like always, reach out to me, Money Mitch BZ on Twitter. Hit the thumbs up. Hope you guys enjoyed all the action that was right here on, of course, uh, Start Swing Trading all week. We had some great names. We had Christian Fomhertz, Option Mike, Leah the Trader. We had Anne-Marie Ban, Michael Noss, CMT. Definitely smash the thumbs up. Always going to try to bring us some traders to bring some value to the show. I hope you guys enjoy it and always check out what we have for you on our other shows. We have, of course, live trading with Benzinga. That's more for the day trading action. That's from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern. So if you're missing that, don't know what you're watching or where you're trading. And like always, you guys can check out our flagship show, Pre-Market Prep, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern. I'll check you guys out. Like always, keep pushing. And just for the, the chat mention of Zscaler, it tried to come back, wasn't able to do it on that one. I say you stick with the kind of the leaders in that name, Pan W and CrowdStrike, as those continue higher today, even though Zscaler is not. We'll see you next time, team. Smash the like on the way out and stay right here so you guys can check out Michael. And of course, we'll see. Will we get into the stage three uptrend? You don't got to go anywhere. We're just going to have to wait and find out. But I'll tell you one thing. Nice bullish day, at least on the day today. We'll find out if we can actually make it back to the push. See you next time, team. Stay safe out there. Keep working on your skills. And like always, you guys can catch us on the book club as we keep growing. We're going to go into, of course, Japanese candlestick trading styles. We'll look into candlesticks. If you guys want to learn a little bit more, Learn a little bit from Steve Nielsen. That's the author. Smash the like. I'll take you guys over now to Michael's stream. Don't go anywhere, team. Stay right here.